Hey everyone, I'm Shane Hall. I'm a CCA crop scout for Big Yield. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about some agronomic highlights for the year of 2020 and some of the things that we can learn from uh, the crop growing season. Some of the highlights for 2020, I believe, uh, were depending on where you were, some people got some really timely rains. And because of those timely rains, we saw some really nice fertility in a lot of the crops that we grew. And a, a lot of folks did not get um, so those timely rains and we experienced some some heat and and some drought and those types of stresses in other places but for me a lot of people I, th I think that was a highlight for a lot of people that they got some good timely rains um, another thing that I saw that that people did this year is they made a plan and they stuck to it and when those plans are put into action whether it's with their genetics or their fertility and and and, and really focusing on their soil health i saw i saw some real successes uh, from people who, who who stuck to a plan well as part of the positives uh, and the highlights of the year i i mentioned uh weather but that's also can be one of the negatives as well uh, early on in this season, we saw um, some rain, a, a lot of rain come through, and that that caused uh, some folks to struggle with their herbicide inputs. And um, if they didn't get any rain, then those those uh, pre-emergent herbicides weren't activated. And if they got too much rain, then uh, then you had uh, leaching and and all those types of things. So that was a difficult thing uh, for, for people to, to have a good plan in place and then have, it, uh, have that plan thwarted by the weather. Uh, but, you know, those things are gonna come and we have to be prepared and ready for that as well. I think one of the, one of the big struggles for this year, one, one of the uh, more, more difficult things that farmers had to deal with were insects. And that's one of those things, it's a, it's a year to year deal. You know, whether you're going to have an insect problem or not and, and unfortunately we just can't uh, predict it. Now we can get ahead of the curve and that's one of the things I want to do for next year but this year we saw um, we saw European corn borer that caused some issues, caused some stock breakage, some lodging in some corn. This year we saw uh, earworm feeding that really took a toll on uh, the corn that did not have the traits and in, in our non-GMO varieties. And so those things, th those insects really, uh, r really dock some yield for some folks. Uh, also right now, uh, we're dealing with a, kind of an influx of stink bugs in soybeans. And people think, well, it's, you know, I see the leaves yellowing and, and they're kind of past their, uh, uh, we're, we're kind of past our point of, of managing our crops, but we have to be careful with that because the stink bug, they have a, a different type of mouth part than say grasshoppers or bean leaf beetles. They've got a piercing sucking mouth part and they're able to uh, get into the seed even when it becomes fairly hard. So and even all the way up to maturity, they can cause shriveling and, and they can cause a delay in maturity in those plants. So we're still looking out for bugs. We're still looking out for, uh, for, for stink bugs, uh, especially um, because they, those numbers are increasing in our fields. For this coming year, I think one of the most important things that, uh, that we need to do is to make sure we know our fertility. Um, if you haven't had a grid sample recently, I would encourage you to get one um, over the fall or in early spring. Fall's a great time right after the crops come out uh, to get in and, and get that soil sampled in, in, in grid form so you know exactly what you're dealing with in your field. Uh, a lot of people say, well, that's, you know, it's, it, 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 there's an expense there that I really wasn't counting on. Well, how, when was the last time that you, you put lime on your field? Do you know what the pH is in your field? Uh, so much of the year I've heard people say, well, I've, I've, I put 150 pounds of nitrogen down. Where did, uh, where did it go? Or, or why are my plants so short? Or how come I'm not seeing that input um, in, in my yield? Or how come I'm not seeing that input in these plants? How come they're not taller and bigger and all those types of things? Well, I tell people all the time that uh, just because the plant's not taking it up doesn't mean it's not there. Um, you may have plenty of nitrogen in your field, but the bottom line is if our pH isn't right, if, if, our, if our soil is too acidic, 
if it's too alkaline, then the, the plant just isn't going to take up the nutrients that are there. They become tied up and, and the, the plant is, is not, not ready or able to take up those nutrients. And so what do you have? Well, uh, very simply, you have a lot of inputs. You've got a lot of dollars going into your soil that uh, your plants never did use and you're not seeing that um, in your in your in your crop yield you're not seeing that those dollars come back to you if your fertility in your field uh, is not right if you don't know what's going on in there when you when you grid sample um, the great thing about that it's not something they have to do every year it's not an expense that you have to count on every single year you can <clears throat> You can do a three to five year plan. Those grid samples are good from um, th for, for three to five years. And so you'll understand what type of fertility uh, your field needs and then create a plan, create a program uh, that is best for your field. So know your fertility. I think that's a big thing going into 2021. Uh, make sure that you're getting with, with your crop consultant. Make sure you're getting with your, uh, your certified crop advisor. Uh, to help you build a fertility plan because we don't we don't want those dollars uh, just going out the window we don't want we're, we're not none of us are interested in uh, throwing our money into the into the rivers and streams so <clears throat> another thing that I would mention is scout your fields right make plans to know what's happening uh, in your fields a lot of you guys farm a lot of acres I know that uh, so make sure that you're getting around and scouting those fields for uh, for pests, for diseases. Um, are, do we have a fertility problem? Do we have uh, something that we can uh, we can seek to rescue? Um, if not, if you don't catch it early enough, then of course uh, it's gonna again it's gonna hit you in the pocketbook. So scout your fields often. <clears throat> One of the things I'm going to do next year as a crop scout is I'm going to set out moth traps, uh, some pheromone traps uh, around the farm here. I'm gonna, uh, for, for my customers, I'm gonna set out pheromone traps so that we can catch those, uh, those army worms and those, those uh, ear worms and all of those things. We're gonna catch those early and we're gonna make a treatment so that they're not, uh, they're not docking our yield. They're not eating up our, uh, so that they're not eating up our profits during uh, the crop growing season. So we're, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be proactive next year. And that's what we need to be as, as, as scouts, as we're scouting our fields. And I know a lot of you guys are awesome at that. Uh, when you scout your fields, don't just do a window watch, right? You're driving by like, oh, those look pretty good. Make sure that you're getting in there. Uh, you're walking those fields. I know it's hard, but man, I, if you're like me, I need the exercise. So get in those fields, walk them, you know, take plant samples, bring them back to the house, cut the stems open um, if it's your soybeans. If it's your corn, uh, take some samples back to the house, wash the roots off, right? Uh, dip them in a bucket, wash the roots off. How, how are they doing? How are the roots doing? Uh, the, the best way to know how, how your plants are thriving is to get in and, and, and get dirty, get your hands dirty, wash those roots off, cut the stems open, and, um, and, and know what's going on inside your plants. All these management practices are important. And again, they're not to replace anything that you're doing. They are to add to uh, the already <clears throat> great plans that you have for your farm. Uh, we know that all of you are uh, you're master farmers. You know what you're doing. Uh, I, I want to help you, and I know the folks here at Big Yield um, want to help you as well. Uh, they want to help you uh, increase your yields and, and uh, uh, to increase profits as well. Uh, that said, there's some really great products here. Uh, so uh, since I've been on with Big Yields, I've got to see firsthand uh, farmers who are using uh, some of these yield enhancement products and uh, whether it be foliar or in furrow, whatever it might be. And folks, these things, these things are working. They are uh, in increasing plant health. They are increasing soil health. They are lowering insect pressure. If you, if you put that, if you haven't used any of that um, uh, cold processed destrose, the, uh, the, the sugar as we call it, uh, if you haven't used any of that sweetener, the, uh, the big yield sweetener, I, I suggest you try it. Put a little bit on, your, uh, on, on one of your fields and try it and see over time how it will uh, decrease disease and increase plant health and uh, really lower the, 
uh, the non-beneficial insect population in those fields. So I encourage you to uh, at least give those products a try. I'm thankful f that you've taken the time to uh, uh, listen today. If you have any need at all, don't, don't hesitate to, to give uh, folks here at Big Yield a call, or you can call me. Again, my name is Shane, and um, I'll be willing and, and ready to work with you on your farm in 2021. Have a great day.